great to hear. Uh, thank you for popping in there. This is just a, another another wonderful thing about this. Um, thanks for joining us today. We'll be using the chat and the Q and A function um, throughout the session. Um, uh, my name is Stuart DeCue. I'm the executive director of the Yale Center for Business and the Environment and a joint degree alum from 2011. I'm thrilled to be with you today. And we have uh, a number of um, wonderful students, uh, graduate students at different stages of their joint degree careers. Um, Lydia, um, who's in her first year, Jackie, who's in her second, Jonathan, who's in his third. Uh, we're going to be spending most of our time today talking through their experience, um, how they're thinking about um, engaging and utilizing the, um, the navigating between the two schools, um, taking full advantage of all the resources and opportunities that are in and around Yale, the kind of problems and challenges um, that they want to solve and how that can connect and relate to the experiences of the folks um, who are on the, the call today. You know, what are you all questions you all are asking? How do you want to come in? Um, and kind of think about your graduate education. What are the kinds of things that you're interested in and delving into um, into your career? Um, there is a chat, more of the stand-up comedy routine. No, that's saved for when you're actually um, here at the program. Um, I, I can't give out all my material right now. Um, the, um, I'm gonna start with just a little bit of background and history uh, on this place, kind of how do we get to where we are um, and, uh, and what does it look like going through before we jump into the experiences uh, of the students. So I'm gonna briefly uh, share my screen here. Um, so um, right there, you got a picture of the joint degree community. Um, you can find us on the website, on the CBA page. There's a whole list of resources and ways of digging in. Um, the wonderful two buildings uh, between the Yale School of the Environment, um, Prune Hall and Evans Hall, uh, the Yale School of Management. Um, um, a little bit about me um, first. Um, uh, so I mentioned in the executive director of the Yale Center for Business Environment, I'm a lecturer at the School of, uh, of the Environment um, and uh, an alum from both schools. I had a bit of a long winding career before I got here working in politics, the private sector, um, uh, public policy and a bit of media work. Um, uh, I'm a dad uh, and father of two boys. I'm in and around the neighborhood here a lot. Um, and, uh, you know, I learn a lot from being around my family and uh, kind of learning and engaging with them. Um, the joint degree community you'll hear called a den. There are den parents in it um, that kind of work with and engage with it. Um, we have a, a feel and a hope that this is a, a bit of family that people get to join um, and one they get to choose and be a part of um, during their time here and then hopefully as an alum for, for long after that. Um, the schools um, have developed a really interesting relationship uh, over the kind of course of time that they've collaborated and it comes from a number of factors. You know, first, um, Yale was the first place to establish a school of forestry in the United States at a time when there was um, real threat and concern about natural resource management, uh, bringing the best science over from Europe to consider how do we put people out on the front lines to preserve and enhance natural resources for the next generation um, and be able to do that in perpetuity. Uh, the school um, then um, was joined by the Yale School of Management, was founded on a different principle, Leaders for Business and Society in the late 70s. Uh, and one of the things that was really fascinating after that was that students, the kind of entrepreneurial students who were showing up at the School of Forestry or the School of Management, um, went and knocked on the doors of both schools and said, the, the Leaders for Business and Society and enhancing and preserving natural resources for future generations match and line up and we wanna make these curriculums and connections work. And so through their advocacy and work, they helped establish the joint degree program and the, being the first of its kind where two got these folks got these two master's degrees in three years uh, rather than four. Um, and that kind of DNA of you know, both schools really being imbued with a, a mission and a purpose and the students, I think, being engaged and really a great part and a key part and critical part of shaping and, and changing the landscape um, at the schools and improving it is something that we carry forward to today. And that happened when we established the Yale Center for Business and the Environment, which was done in 2006. Um, to serve as an innovation hub on campus and a place where students and faculty and staff could all convene and connect. 
Um, and that was, again, an effort from alums, students, um, and external partners to sort of say, we need this rallying point um, on campus. And then, you know, this, this has continued to evolve and grow. And so now there's an executive um, MBA with a focus on sustainability, um, kind of a joint degree for people with 15 years or more experience. Um, we've now also got a certificate program in financing and deploying clean energy run out of the center. That's for people who um, would only be able to attend, um, you know, uh, remotely um, and on one single track of work at Yale. So lots of ways that the work is expanding and growing between the connections uh, in the schools. Um, and the path through this experience um, is one that takes different routes as well, uh, because the place has a lot of options and the ability for you to kind of shape and craft your own experience. So you apply to both schools independently. Um, folks um, like Lydia applied to both schools, uh, were accepted at both schools, and then decided, and Jonathan, and decided to attend both, um, and uh, then chose a school to start at. Um, and Lydia chose to start at SOM. Jonathan chose to start at the Yale School of the Environment in their first years. Um, and then Jackie uh, was a first year at SOM who looked at the joint degree community and said, this is one that I'm really interested in where I see the value of engaging with and looking at the school, the environment and applied within her first year to become a member of that community. And so um, the, in the, the application processes are independent. Um, everyone is um, a, an accepted member of the joint degree community once they're in both. Um, and uh, you can kind of choose your own adventure in some respects. And it's about 50-50 or has been over time between students who start at both schools um, as joint degrees um, or start at one and then, and then go over to the other. Um, within that, we'll talk about this, two orientations, two internships, and kind of dedicated time at each school and then an integrated time of working between both. Uh, you know, what does it look like at the end once you kind of get out to that like little graduation um, uh, symbol at the end and you get to the, the final bit? Well, it takes a lot of different forms, but one of the things that I think we see as being really indicative and, um, and demonstrates the value of the joint degree is the leadership positions in emerging fields that all the joint degrees um, have ended up um, embracing and accepting and continuing to grow with. So you've got people who, you know, wrote the, the, the letter to the IRS to create the tax equity flip for solar, Dan Gross, uh, who teaches now kind of the largest elective course between the School of Management and the School of uh, the Environment and Financing and Deploying Clean Energy. You've got the head of California ISO, Elliot Mainzer. You've got people like Radha Kapali who are figuring out the international investment vehicles to protect forests across the world. You've got heads of um, like regional and local environmental lobbying organizations, people working at a global level on the circular economy like Brendan. You've got the mayor of New Haven uh, is a joint degree graduate, the person from NatureVest who leads their investment in natural infrastructure, or folks like Namrita Kapoor who've been at the head of EDF's corporate partnerships to impact investing to now teaching and engaging in different ways. So the kind of I think there's a bunch of rare birds that end up flocking to the program and then they end up kind of moving um, out into the world uh, in really unique and interesting ways and crafting and creating things um, that um, you know, I think a lot of us are benefiting from in the fields that they're helping to shape. Uh, and so you get to talk to three of those folks today um, who are on that path and journey. I'm just gonna uh, uh, stop the share here and focus back on the faces. Um, and we're gonna start uh, with Lydia. Lydia is just at the kind of outset of this experience. Um, you can see the virtual background sitting behind her because she's in this, um, you know, uh, this incredibly interesting year where uh, a lot of things are different um, and changing. And that's what it looks like when you're background at an SOM class at the moment. Um, but Lydia came through the application process. You know, when we we're all going to be learning in person is now in a hybrid mode. Um, and Lydia, just tell us like, you know, when you were one of the students that probably did the most due diligence on thinking about the programs that you want to do, the culture and the fit where you wanted to be, how your background matched where you wanted to end up, like, how are you thinking about the experience and skills that you brought to this um, and applying it to the program here and kind of what's the day to day experience look like? like what's the story from like, what does things look like for you right now in school? Yeah, definitely. There's a lot there, but I'll start a little bit by just saying what I did before um, coming to, I'm starting at SOM this year, I'll be at YSE next year. And I, I was the director of business operations at a small tech startup where I actually worked for seven years uh, from 10 people, it was around hundred people when I left. 
So one of the things that's actually, I think, interesting, and I'll talk a little bit about this, is I have zero environmental background. Uh, one of the key reasons I was looking at the joint degree um, and how I made that decision. But I think, uh, you know, sort of what I want to focus on there is like, I was drawn to, you know, I'm interested in tech. Uh, I will continue to be in tech afterwards. But what I was looking for is switching into the world of sustainability. You know, how do we start thinking about the sustainable actions of corporations? How do we track the ROI of that decision making and leveraging my big data technology experience in order to move into that? Um, so I wanted to start with the business school side of things to sort of get my grounding, learn how to be a student again, and also just identify what type of um, you know, climate related things I wanted to learn for my second year as there's a little more choice um, in the YSE program. Mm -hmm. Um, so, so far, it's, uh, it's a weird world to be a grad student in, and Stu was sort of joking, like, I spend all of my time in this box that is the background of my name. Um, but I have to say, I think all of the, 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 you know, there's no regrets in making this decision to come to school right now and starting the way I am. More than happy to talk to people about, you know, how my expectations have shifted, uh, you know, I actually played round one and so I very much, you know, interviewed and visited school thinking everything would be in person, which is not the case anymore. Um, what I have seen from the community though, and we'll talk more about this later on, is just a willingness to face this new world and figure out how do we make this work? How do we continue get to get to know each other? How do we still make learning valuable? Um, and I've definitely found that to be the case, which is one of the reasons why I'm like, great, really glad I chose to do this now. We'll talk more about that later. Cool, thank you. Uh, great to have you here, Lydia. And so one thing I should also mention is the three folks here are also, um, I think, you know, wonderful resource for you all on the call. They've also volunteered and stepped up to be the admissions ambassadors uh, for this year. So you'll be getting information um, on their email addresses or ways to reach out or connect to others in the community. But this is kind of a part of the way that the joint degree community works is that people sort of solicit and understand, hey, how can I help? Where are the ways I can support? How can I reach out and connect to students or others in the ways that people supported me? Um, so Jackie, um, you know, you've now gone through the first year at the School of Management, right? You went through the core like Lydia, you've started now at the School of the Environment. Um, you know, what were you kind of coming in thinking about um, the questions you were asking yourself when you started at SOM? Um, how did that evolve in that first year to will make you want to apply to and join the joint degree program? And you know, what did you test out and do with that first summer internship to kind of like, you know, play around with some ideas and approaches that you're thinking about in your career? Yeah, so hi, everybody. Um, to give some background, like Lydia did, I was in consulting um, prior to coming to Yale. So I worked um, at PwC and at Accenture um, doing financial services banking projects. Um, and did not have any sustainability background, um, but really throughout my years at work, um, through like various different reasons, decided that sustainability is kind of what I wanted to dedicate the rest of my career to. Um, and so I decided to come back to school. I kind of always planned on getting my MBA. Um, I had taken the GMAT like right when I graduated from college so that I would like be ready to go um, when I felt like it was time. Um, so I spent my research time looking at schools that I really felt um, had could give me like some of the skills that I was looking for um, and could help me make a transition um, to a career that um, I felt gave me um, more meaning in my life. And so I was really drawn to Yale. Um, I really loved SOM's mission of educating leaders for business and society was really excited about CBay and kind of all the opportunities that I would have um, through that. So decided to come to SOM. Um, and then throughout my time last year, I started getting involved in a lot of the SOM sustainability initiatives. So I was a leader of the Business and Environment Club. Um, I have a position as a sustainability coordinator for SOM in Evans Hall, the building that it's in, um, and went to a lot of different events and started meeting people um, and just kind of started realizing throughout my first semester, like truly how much I didn't know um, and how much I wanted to know um, to kind of get a head start on the career that I was looking for. So I decided to apply 
um, for the joint degree um, to see if I got in and then would give me the opportunity to spend an extra year just learning about topics that I didn't know about, um, have a second internship opportunity like Stu mentioned as well. So that was kind of my reasoning. I talked to a lot of joint degrees um, and then in the spring found out I was lucky enough to be accepted into YSE um, and decided to do the program. So this summer I interned at an SOM alums um, agroforestry startup. So call it, it's called Forested Foods, it's in Ethiopia. And um, my CEO's um, kind of goal is to reduce deforestation and prevent deforestation in Ethiopia by providing farmers who live in forests with opportunities um, to make money by selling products that you can grow in the forest and produce in the forests that aren't trees. Um, so mostly sell honey um, and spices from Ethiopia. And I was the sustainability operations intern um, and kind of learned a lot about some of the job or some of the roles that I would want to have and some of the responsibilities I would want. Um, looked at carbon emissions calculation, um, some of the sourcing of their packaging materials, um, metrics on their sustainability goals, things like that. Um, and I learned a lot over the summer. One of the things that I had, I had never worked at a startup before. I think Accenture has like 300,000 employees or something like that. So I went from that to two employees plus a couple of interns. Um, and I really liked the people I worked with a lot. Um, I think for me, I feel a little bit more at home in a, a slightly larger company. Um, so I think that's kind of what I'll be looking for for this coming summer. Um, is to hopefully get a corporate sustainability like operations job um, at a larger company and kind of see how that's different. Cool, thanks for that. Yeah, and let's, I would love to come back to this kind of point you raised Jackie too, of like the questions that really are kind of like getting you excited or that drove you to kind of study more or think about it. Like what are the questions that not just, you know, you want to answer on a weekly basis, but you want to answer over 15 to 20 years that help drive your career and the kind of questions about where your fit is, right? Like, am I at a startup? Am I at a large organization? Like, how do you get a sense of where kind of role and mission meet um, and, and think about that and experiment with that over your time here? Um, great. Um, and apologies if the glare from my giant forehead is causing anybody any issues. I can't change the way the sun is coming in here um, or the fact that I have a receding hairline. Um, Jonathan, so you are at the kind of, you know, third year. Um, you're figuring out kind of how to meld these. Um, what are the experiences that you've utilized while at Yale? Um, tell a little bit about your background experience, why you came, and then how have you explored and dug in here? Like, what are the ways that you've thought about engaging in both schools across the university to get the most out of the experience. Yeah, thank you, Stu. Um, so my background is in foreign policy. I'd worked in the federal government uh, for about three years and then at a nonprofit think tank that did global foreign policy issues for about six years before coming to Yale. And in my last job, I had done some work on energy and climate issues, building a network that shared best practices between the US and Europe and other countries on energy and climate issues. Um, and I didn't have a deep background in it before starting that job, but I really became passionate about it there. And that's what inspired me to want to apply first to YSE. Um, and then I considered the joint degree program after I'd already really been sold on the advantages of Yale and, and what was then the forestry school at Yale through talking to several alumni who'd been through the program. Um, and um, my path here, I think, and this is something that the Jackie and Lydia also touched on a bit in their, their years, but the first year was really figuring out what I wanted to focus on. There's so many different things within the environmental space. So it's kind of narrowing that down a bit. Um, and then the second year was really, for me, it was the SOM course. It's a pretty intense year, but growing and learning a huge amount, both about business and finance um, and corporate strategy and things like that, but also about leadership and myself and how to work on teams. So some, some uh, skill sets, but also some broader and kind of deeper introspection. Um, in terms of how I've used the time at Yale to really explore what I came in to study. Um, in addition to classwork, which has obviously been huge, and I'm happy to talk about some of those classes in detail if people have questions, there's some really incredible extracurricular opportunities. So last year, I was part of Mint, the MBA Impact Investing Competition, which is a nationwide competition um, that Yale has a particularly strong track record in. And you basically pick a company uh, that you wanna pitch to investors, and it's a real competition, so there's actually money on the line. And you do due diligence, you research what companies, you basically take the role of venture capitalist. 
Um, and it was an incredible experience. It's something I've always wanted to focus on venture capital, an incredible experience to actually do that work with some great mentorship from fellow classmates, from professors, and from the Mint community. Um, and so that's one where I learned a huge amount. And I, I may or may not work in venture capital, but understanding how that sector thinks, I think, was incredibly revealing for me. Uh, this year, I applied to be a, a Carey Fellow. So John Carey is a distinguished fellow at Yale. Uh, and has about 20 students from across Yale College and different graduate schools working for him each year on research. Um, and so that's something I've applied for and I'm really excited to take advantage of this year. There are, there are so many different ones, but I think for me, those have been two of the most meaningful experiences I've had in exploring the kinds of careers I'm interested in, in policy, in finance, and in renewable energy development. Great, thanks. You know, so coming back to, you know, um, Jackie said something that struck me, which is completely different from my own experience of that Jackie took the GMAT like directly out of undergrad. Like it was just like, she knew she wanted to get an MBA. Like for me, you know, and I don't know other people on the line, like I'd worked for over a decade before I even considered it or thought about it. You know, Jonathan was just saying like, you know, had looked at the school, the environment, and then came to this as an idea. Like, do you all have a, a an approach or a process by which you're kind of coming to the the questions that you want to answer during your time at Yale? Like, you know, Lydia, like as you're going through classes and in the core curriculum, like what are you picking up on that's sort of saying like, how do I want to keep pushing this? What's the what's the piece here that I'm learning or thinking about that I want to integrate or connect? Like, what are the what are the what are the ways you're identifying questions that help you you think about your time? Yeah, that's a really excellent question about the process of questioning, which is always a fun one to go down. Um, I mean, I think I mentioned this, but I'm, I'm especially interested in corporate sustainability decision making and really strongly believe. So my company before actually was in reputation intelligence. And so our corporate customers did a lot of tracking of the reputation of the different initiatives that they were looking at. And sustainability increasingly was one of those things. And I just really came to a point where it was really easy to see that there was interest in corporations for making that move and that it was so easy for them to sort of greenwash a lot of those actions. And, and then sort of like transferred that, you know, similarly to Jackie, just sort of went through this process of, I don't want to be working in this space anymore. I am really interested in making the rest of my career about sustainability and mitigating climate change. How do we do this? I see this opportunity to learn a lot more about corporations, how they, how they make decisions and, and try and like wrap my head around, are there best practices and tools um, for them to actually track true ROI there? Um, so I'm, you know, seven weeks into classes. And so the part of have, have that, like those questions haven't changed that much yet, um, especially because I'm taking, you know, SOM core, you take really foundational classes at first, like accounting and econ. Um, but I will say that it, you know, accounting, not my strong suit. Uh, definitely something though that you can immediately see the impact of, okay, I'm interested in this question of ROI, understanding how companies account for things, how they need to represent these decisions on the financial forms is something that's really critical. So Stu, so far I would say that mostly um, sort of my, my base of questions has more like enriched the focus I'm able to bring to classes and remind myself that they're important because while we might not be talking about context in much depth yet, um, it's really clear to see how that context will lead to future things I can learn. And what I'm continuing to do is have conversations with my peers, sort of start paying attention to what's going on at YSE in order to then understand, you know, how do I match this basis of uh, understanding of business with what I need to know in the environmental space in order to refine those questions I'm asking and expand them. Yeah. And Jackie, I mean, you went from one of the, you mentioned you went from the biggest global consulting firms to the smallest startup you could possibly be at, and you're kind of figuring out fit and where, you know, you want to see, like, what are the career resources that you have available, the alumni resources and others to kind of continue to identify that fit? Like, where do you go next in this summer? Like, how are you reaching out or thinking about this? You know, what's the systematic approach, like replicating, taking the GMAT right after um, undergrad that you're now pursuing to kind of figure out the next steps? Yeah, so I think um, I have relaxed a little bit from uh, taking the GMAT right out of undergrad and um, trying to give myself a little bit more time. <laughs> so you got a fan club online that's like, I just I just took the GMAT too. Like, yeah. Um, yeah, so 
So I think the nice thing this year, um, now that I'm at um, both schools, I have access to two different CDOs, so I can kind of keep an eye on the different job postings um, that come up in both places. And there is some overlap, but there also are some opportunities that pop up in one place versus another that um, I wouldn't necessarily have found. Um, and also having the, the actual CDO, the people who work at the CDO as well as resources to talk to um, and get kind of different perspectives from there. Um, alumni are, generally like very receptive to talking. And I think also the current students who are here um, are a huge resource. I think talking to just, you know, all of my peers, I learn all of the different cool things that they did in their backgrounds and think, oh, that, that kind of sounds interesting to me. Um, you know, what do, I, what do I need to do to like kind of think about that a little bit more? Um, so I think it's really just being open to different people and different opportunities. CBay for, um, plug for CBay puts on, um, pathways program where they have people come in and talk about their careers. I think there's one I'm going to on Thursday um, with someone at Cabot Creamery. So just kind of looking out for all those opportunities where people are coming to campus and talking about their careers and just being present in those conversations and thinking about what's really exciting me about what they said um, so that I can kind of look for, for those words in, in job descriptions and things as I'm applying. Yeah, yeah, so I mean, one of the things that I think was remarkable about this place is it's just an inc incredible global train station where like constantly people and interesting things are coming through and you're sort of trying to filter and consider all the opportunities that are there. You know, Jonathan, you know, you mentioned like you have this Carey Fellowship, which you're working on um, this year. I mean, you've also been an admissions ambassador for students coming in for almost your entire time, you know, at Yale. When you think about sort of describing the culture or the opportunities here for people who are asking about it. Like, what are the stories that you tell? What are the kinds of things that you highlight to, you, to give people a sense of the place um, as they're trying to figure out, is this the right fit? Is this a place that, that, that can match how I wanna learn or how I wanna engage with people? Yeah, it's a great question. And, and first kind of on the general attributes of the community. I mean, it's, it's really, it's first and foremost an incredibly supportive community both the joint degree community and then the SOM and YSE communities, the alumni communities related to both of those schools, um, really incredibly supportive. And when you're a student, it's helpful in terms of what courses to take, how to use your time here, how to think about your career progression. And in my case, as I'm looking at applying for jobs and starting a new career next year, um, incredibly supportive in terms of connections, networking and continuing to give advice. Um, it's a really passionate community um, people are really, particularly at, at YSC and in the joint degree community, but at, at SOM in general, I think given the school's very strong focus on impact and society, people are here because they're passionate about something. They're passionate about changing the world, or making a difference in their sector. Um, and it's also a really fun community. Uh, there's no single joint degree type. People are, some people are crunchy and outdoorsy. Some people are passionate about nuances of climate policy. Some people work in finance, others launch a startup. Really, it's a very diverse community in that sense. And in terms of a couple of stories that I think really highlight that well for me, um, one was meeting with Dan Gross, who Stu, you mentioned earlier, is a joint degree alum and is a professor here teaching renewable energy project finance, which is one of the most popular classes at both schools. Um, and I, I took the class in my first year in the spring and had an incredible experience. You like basically build a Wall Street style model of a renewable energy project for solar, for wind, and actually see like the cash flows and what impact policy has. It's a great class, um, but he's also an incredibly approachable person who has worked in a lot of the most interesting parts of that field and seen renewable energy evolve. And renewable energy is my focus area. So when I was in New York, I, I reached out to him. I was there for some other meetings, reached out to him and he's an incredibly busy guy, um, but he took over a full hour to meet with me over coffee and just sat down. And it was both tactical advice on how to apply to specific areas but also broader advice on how to think about what kind of a career path I wanted um, from someone who's really done a lot of the things that I'm, I'm thinking about exploring in private equity, in finance and venture capital and, and other areas like that. Um, and then the second story briefly that I think really sticks out in my mind was I just gone on a hike. Uh, it was about last summer on a hike uh, pre-COVID obviously with some joint degree classmates in Connecticut, had a wonderful weekend, camped out under the stars, explored nature, had great conversations. And on the drive back, I, I shared the ride back with the joint degree classmate. Um, and it was this wide ranging conversation. He's a great guy, wide ranging conversation that covered everything from philosophy to like life and what we were looking for and life goals 
to very specific career advice. He, he'd interned in venture capital, which was something I was exploring at the time to like, what, what's that world like, how to pursue those opportunities, how to apply as someone who doesn't have a venture capital or finance background. Um, and to me, I think both of those experiences speak to kind of everything I thought about really positively with the community. It's incredibly supportive. People are really generous with their time and their ex expertise and experience. Um, it's a community of people who are really passionate about the work they do and want to do. And it's a community that's really fun and quirky. That's cool. Thanks for I'd that. like to actually yeah, sure. underscore something about what Jonathan was saying, especially because Jonathan has had the benefit of three years of mostly in person and I'm coming in and this very strange quarantines world. But one, in addition to everything that Jonathan was talking about, I've been really struck by just how that like passion and drive and engagement has also led into a lot of flexibility of how do we continue to find those things when you need to be safe in the midst of a pandemic. And I'll, I'll just say a couple, one of the things that the community has done is tried coming up with small groups where people can meet outside or meet on Zoom, whatever seems right to them. A few weeks ago, night of one of the debates, um, you know, my small group decided to meet on my porch here I was thinking it'd be you know like a 45 minute conversation before everybody just like split to go watch the debate um, something that's key in front of all of our minds and it was just such an incredible conversation in time that we ended up sitting for hours we were like ah should we go watch that debate like maybe it's fine like let's just keep chatting a little bit longer 45 minute conversation turned into like oh my gosh it's time for us to go to bed like what just happened here um, and so I have been really just so impressed by how all of those things that I thought would be true about this community when I was, you know, interviewing and calling alums and having those conversations um, have continued to be true, even in these wild, wild times. Um, so it all still holds. Cool. Thanks for that. And, and Jackie, do you have a story too? I mean, you mentioned kind of wanting to learn, like it was almost like I wanted to learn another year. Do you have another a story as well of just kind of getting lost in a learning environment or like what are the things that, wh where did you, a story of when you just got into flow here at Yale that, that you think tells a little bit about the culture in the place? Yeah, so I think um, there's, and I know I keep mentioning CBay, but I do a lot of things with them. Um, there is an organization uh, program called CBay 2050 Fellows, um, which has been going on for several years now, which I was a member of last year, and then I'm continuing this year, um, where we meet once a month. Um, there's students, about 30 students, I think, each year from the various um, graduate schools at Yale. Um, led by some joint degrees and also Vincent Stanley, um, who works for Patagonia. And we meet up every month and talk about just like a topic um, that's kind of preset, but people bring in readings. Um, and then you can just kind of sit and read ahead of time. And then you have a one and a half hour discussion with all these people and just learn everyone's perspective on so many different topics. Um, and it's just I think that's one of the coolest things about being at Yale is that I sit in a room with a lot of people on a topic that I've just spent a couple hours like reading about and formulating my own opinion on something. And then someone says something that's completely different than anything that would have popped into my mind that changes how I think about something. Um, and just, it's just amazing like the, the diversity of people here and how just every conversation leaves you thinking about um, something differently. There's an organization I'm part of at SOM where our ground, one of our ground rules is to turn your exclamation points into question marks. Um, so just like constantly learning and changing um, your views and kind of solidifying a little bit more each time um, what you think about something. Cool. I heard that. I really like that, that change of exclamation point and question mark. Um, uh, so, you know, there's a number of questions coming in. Let's turn to the questions that are coming in the Q&A. A lot of folks kind of ask, and this is a question that's come over time, Jonathan, so maybe you'll start with you on this. Like, you know, there's a group, big group of students at SOM who care about and are focused on sustainability in our joint degrees. There's a really big group of students that are at YSC who are in a business and environment track or in an energy, energy and environment track and ways that they're like thinking about navigating the school in two years rather than three. When you think about the kind of benefits to the joint degree program and what you can get out of the two years versus the three years? Like, what does that equation look like for you? Yeah, it's a, it's a great question. And I mean, listen, I definitely don't think the joint degree makes sense for everybody. I think it's a very personal decision. It, it, it depends on what your background is, 
It depends on what your career goals are. You know, obviously the third year, there's a cost both financially and in terms of the opportunity cost. The flip side, I think for me that really sold me on it is there's also a, a benefit to that third year. Uh, and I think either Lydia or Jackie mentioned this earlier, but having that extra time really to explore. And I think particularly for me as someone who is transitioning from a slightly different career, I had some background in energy and climate issues, but didn't have a lot of depth. Um, I had been kind of a generalist in my past career in foreign policy. And I really wanted to leave graduate school with real expertise in an area. Uh, and for me, that's climate and energy specifically. Um, and so that, that's definitely why I really wanted to have the time at YSC to dive a bit deeper. And you certainly can, I mean, SOM has an incredibly flexible curriculum where your first year is <clears throat> the core of the MBA program, but the second year, there's a huge amount of flexibility and you can take a ton of classes at YSC or elsewhere. So there's definitely a path to doing it in two years, but it's not quite the same. And I really wanted that additional depth, those additional connections, also that, that additional network of classmates. Um, Jackie and Lydia have both touched on this, but for me in undergrad, it's the same thing as in grad school where I've learned as much from my classmates and conversations informally as I have in classes. And I've learned a lot in classes. So that's, that's saying a lot about the depth of the expertise. People really come in with a lot of background. Um, so it's, it's learning from classmates, it's a network, and then it's also the credentialing. Uh, it's the credentialing. The MBA has an incredible credential if you want to work in the corporate space or even in nonprofit spaces or government. Uh, and similarly, YSC has that credential if you want to do work where you know policy expertise or environmental expertise is valued. And I, I really wanted that as well. Yeah, and it's, it's really interesting. So uh, one thing we've seen over time, this goes to Jonathan's point, is like, the joint degrees find each other too, as kind of like, who's the geek that you're going to stick with for a little while and dig in on something or continue to build stuff with and kind of like where you're going to find six months or a year to just go down a rabbit hole with somebody and then come out as the 101st expert in the world on the other side on a topic. And that's still something that we see replicated over and over again, where people have done work on regenerative agriculture or wetland mitigation banking, or you know, Jonathan's work on developing courses with our FTCE program, along with a range of other students is like, you know, you helped create a world-class curriculum for working professionals. I mean, and during, you had the time to do it. Um, and the flexibility, and it was an incredibly valuable commitment and, you know, support, uh, but also learning process. And so where do you kind of think about the, the use of that time in different ways? Um, Jonathan, do you have something you wanted to add there? Yeah, I, I was just going to highlight that because I think that's a great one. So what Stu was talking about is that CBay, uh, in my first year, launched one of Yale's first online courses ever at any part of Yale. Uh, and so I helped design that and it's focused on financing and deploying clean energy, which is exactly what I've wanted to study. Um, and so I actually helped build the policy course working with a couple of different professors here at Yale along with CBay. And as Stu said, it was a phenomenal learning experience for me. I mean, I learned as much, if not more from that part-time job as I did from any of the courses I took because it really was exactly what I wanted to focus on. And because I was having this very close personal relationship with multiple professors, I wasn't just one student in their class, I was really working with them, helping them film videos and develop a new curriculum. Um, and so I think those opportunities are phenomenal. And, and as Stu said, it's something I could have done if I was just at YSC or just at SOM, but, but the time is really valuable. And having that third year gave me a bit more comfort in taking the time to kind of go down that path. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there's a, so there's a number of questions too, Lydia and Jackie on kind of coming from really established, um, you know, sectors, you know, consulting and technology or kind of considering that, like, where are you, are you sort of mashing up the experience here that you bring to it? Um, what do you connect while you're here? And then are you thinking about, how are you thinking about going back into those on the outside? Like, what does it look like down the road to kind of, Jack, are you now considering going back into consulting, but with like, kind of renewed vigor and sense of purpose and like a clear path on where you want to take the industry in 15 years. And Lydia, like, what does it look like to reshape tech around things that, you know, may not be the core central purpose right now, but could be imbued in them? Um, so Jackie, let's start with you. Like, are you, are you still now back and considering consulting or other things on the table? Um, yeah, there are a lot of other things on the table. I think I came into Yale saying um, there's a 0% chance that I go back to consulting after school. I think after um, a year and a quarter, there's a 15% chance I go back um, into consulting after school. So maybe thinking about it a little bit more, but I think 
um, taking the skills that I learned around like working in a team, um, working with a client and the expectations that come with that. Um, and also the, the getting to a new place and not really knowing a lot and having to really upskill um, quickly, I think are all skills that I've taken here. Um, and hoping, I think after school to go work for a corporation that's really trying to build their sustainability team and their sustainability capability and think about what do they not know as a company, where do they want to be um, in five, 10 years, and kind of coming up with that implementation plan that I would have come up with um, for my client, but to come up with for the company that I'm working for and then be there to, um, to see it happen is kind of the goal that I have right now. Cool. And I think there's a lot of people too, Lydia, who come in with like this kind of question of like, I don't have a background in one or the other school. And they're very nervous about like, well, how would I fit? Like, I'm not, I haven't done this both. And, and you came in without one. And you're now thinking about going back into the industry, like kind of bringing that in and transforming it. Like, how is your thought process there? And like, do you have an idea what the, what the dot on the horizon looks like? Yeah, totally. So I think it's, you know, I came to school not because I was trying to pivot what I was doing or like what type of work uh, or the industry, but was looking to change the application of both my skills and the, the type of technology, right? And so for me, what that means is like, I'm here basically 100% to learn. And that both means in the classroom and also from my peers. I think talking about, you know, Jonathan was talking a lot about the value of three degrees and why you would choose that and for me something that I like can't highlight enough is that one of the key reasons to choose the joint degree program for me is the sense that this group of individuals that I then get to be a part of for these three years are the people who will be solving overlapping problems for the rest of our lives right and be able to continue to be inspired by that um, I at this point fully intend to go back into tech and to go back into operations um, I'm, you know, like kind of not so secretly hoping that somebody builds a company that I then want to run for them um, that works on understanding the ROI of, of corporate decision making for sustainable action. So, you know, hopefully somebody's listening out there. But um, the other reality is like three years gives us so much opportunity to learn and to change our minds, right? Again, I'm only a few weeks into this and I fully anticipate that my assumptions about corporate actions being a huge lever are going to be pushed and challenged. That's what I'm here to learn. Um, you know, I'm, I'm using that the opportunity of three years to like play a little bit in things that are not exactly a direct answer to what I think I'm looking at. For example, I just joined the um, Fishbowl Ventures, which is the new impact investing fund that we're trying to start this year. I do not intend to go into impact investing. I do think it's really interesting space and a way to learn about, um, you know, how people are innovating um, for climate and sustainability. And not to mention, if I do have my own startup one day, really valuable to learn how to have those conversations from the other side. Um, so yeah, I mean, I really see this as like an exploratory period and having three years just gives you extra space to really challenge the assumptions of, oh, I should be doing this type of internship, oh, I should be doing these types of clubs, and just frees you up to really ask the question of yourself of like, what are my, what are my goals for being here? How do I make sure that I'm approaching those goals and learning about them in a thoughtful and, and also maybe like non-standard way? Um, so I strongly recommend thinking about it that way, but it's not the right, you know, it's not the right choice for everyone. So just be aware of that. Yeah, the, the analogy that sometimes people have brought up is like, you know, the most productive place in a natural environment is an estuary where salt and fresh water meet, right? And like wherever you're there, like that's where growth blooms and just lots of things happen. That's the fish hatchery um, of the, or what's where all the birds show up. Um, so where can you get between um, two areas and, and consider that? Um, yeah, no, and it's, uh, and it's really interesting to kind of see over time um, the way that um, we've seen um, students kind of go through that process and consider it in the backgrounds that they had coming in, because you know, there's questions coming in about what backgrounds do people typically have? Well, and I think you all can attest to your classmates. It's like, it's everybody, um, you know, in terms of, um, you know, the international students coming from different spots and areas to students who are coming from the oil and gas sector to people who are coming from consulting to people who have an NGO background to folks who are involved in the policy process. Like, I think 
one thing I would characterize this is like people who come here and really enjoy the joint degree are driven by questions that are interdisciplinary and kind of between stuff. And they're trying to figure out the ways to navigate through them, right? They're like searching out things that aren't necessarily answered yet. And that's one of the things that I find so encouraging on an annual basis is like every year you learn something from people who are becoming the 51st or 101st expert in the world at age 28 or 29. Right, they're producing something or getting a career started in regenerative agriculture or green banking or something else like a field that didn't exist when they came in is now something that they're going to be at the forefront of when they leave or they'll be at the forefront of five years after they leave. Um, and so that kind of evolution, I think, is a really a healthy place to be involved in um, or that kind of that kind of area to be involved in. Um, let's see if we have some other uh, questions from the audience here on. Um, Oh, this is a good one um, uh, from Marcus. What do you wish there was more or less of in the joint degree program? Like if you could tune something up, Jonathan, and have more of it, what would you have? And maybe Jackie, you can go with the less and, and Lydia, you probably don't know yet. Yeah, for the more of, uh, and this is partly a COVID answer, um, but the more of is just more interaction. Uh, Lydia mentioned, I was actually one of the people on her porch. It was a, a wonderful evening. And just those chances to keep meeting each other and dive in. And, and you get, we get that in class now. We've done some extracurriculars. We've done some meetups. Um, but I really don't think you can have too much of that. Kind of exactly what you're saying, Stu, with that estuary analogy, um, bringing different people together and kind of cross-pollinating is, is where really cool ideas happen. The, uh, I mentioned doing Mint, the MBA impact investing competition. The business we pitched was actually a business that was created at Yale. Um, and it was a great example of a couple of students with different backgrounds coming together and creating this really cool new innovative financing platform for renewable energy with a, with a cool like mission uh, and helping low income communities behind it as well. Um, so I think that that cross pollination, that chance to meet up is invaluable. Uh, and it's particularly hard during COVID times, but even during non COVID times, I think the, the more the merrier really. Yeah. And Jackie, do you have any thoughts on kind of like where you would change the balance of stuff that you're doing? Having seen one year at SOM, now starting at YSE, like where would you where would you fix things? Yeah, I think it's um, and it's obviously it's a great problem to have, but I think just figuring out which of the 25 amazing things I want to do every hour. Um, and I wish I had less. I don't wish I had less schoolwork because um, it's interesting and and stuff too. But sometimes just like less structured time so that I would have more of the hours to do all these other things. Like yesterday, I joined um, an hour webinar through the School of Public Health where Dr. Fauci came and talked to Yale um, students about what's going on with COVID. And it was so cool and amazing um, to have that opportunity to learn from him. So just like having more hours or less scheduled or fewer scheduled hours in the day um, so that I can schedule them with uh, cool things like that. That's great. And I can't believe I missed the Fauci talk. I mean, that's like the other part too, is like the way that things are evolving and changing. Like I get really excited about people being able to access the school of public health or the school, the law school or the school of medicine or nursing in ways right now where people have opened up all their events and curriculum, where even if it was a 20 minute walk to get somewhere, that still might be a barrier, but now you can just pop on and tune over and we can have a better hybrid of that in the future where you do that as well. So that's, that's really cool. Um, any, um, any other kind of, we're about 1250. I'm wondering, are there kind of closing thoughts or kind of messages that you'd want to tell the people on the line? We've got about 102 folks on, we're all at the point of considering this, like thinking about the careers that are out there, the learning opportunity um, that's um, here at Yale, the community that they would be joining between um, the two schools and the joint degree program, like, what are, what are the things that sort of stand out and you'd want to pass along, uh, Jonathan? Yeah, I, I think particularly for folks who are seriously considering applying this year or in the near future, um, really use this time to reflect on yourself. Um, I, I took a fair amount of time as I crafted both essays, particularly for SOM, um, to think about what my real objectives were, why I was actually applying, and why this made sense. And that really helped me um, decide that A, this was the right step to take. It, it, is, it is a big decision uh, to go to graduate school at all and certainly to do a, a joint degree program. Um, and, and actually I've, I've gone back since then as a student 
and looked back at that essay. And it's been really grounding to remember what questions I came in with, what my objectives were, because as Jackie said, you can be sort of torn in so many different directions. There's so many cool things happening. Uh, and a real challenge is, is keeping yourself grounded in what you want to do. Um, so it'll help you with your application. It'll help you get in, craft a compelling narrative. But I also think it'll really help you kind of launch this incredibly cool journey as you move forward to deepen your career, to change your career, to enhance your career. Yeah, just, that, you know, this is like, I love that because it's just, the, the hope is that this is a transformational, not a transactional experience. And how many times in your life are you going to sit down and write an essay about really thinking and dedicated time about who you want to be and what kind of impact you want to have on the world? And like, that should not be about getting into a school, but that's like reflected time. You're going to invest tons of money and your time in a place. And like what you put on paper there, if you get it right, will be like Jonathan. It will be something you come back to and say, this is a guidepost for me. This is something that has meaning and value to me that I can return to, that I can be grounded in when I want to solve problems or consider where I'm going next. So I absolutely, I love that you're doing that, Jonathan. That's super cool. Um, Jackie, kind of what are, what are the elements that you're um, kind of would want to leave folks with? Yeah, I think maybe similar to Jonathan a little bit, but think about what's really important to you, um, not just in your professional life and your personal life and like what are the things that make you happy, um, you know, how you like to learn, different kinds of activities you like to do, you know, how much you like to cook, things like that. And kind of just keep those in mind as you go through all the process. Think about, you know, if you're really into food, like where would you be excited to go to eat um, in New Haven? Um, you know, do you love running up East Rock Park or would that be something you'd be excited about? Um, do you like learning? Are you really interested in public health things and would love to be able to go to events at the Yale School of Public Health? So just think about, you know, this the time that you're gonna spend in school and like how you wanna spend it both personally and as part of, you know, school things. Um, and I think that helps kind of figure out like where you want to be um, and who you want to be spending that time with. Thanks, Jackie. Yeah, it's really good. So one of the people that we have is a resident fellow at CBay. Jackie mentioned she's in a, a discussion group with Vincent Stanley, who's the director of philosophy at Patagonia. There's another gentleman named Peter Boyd, whose life's focus and work is kind of on connected leadership and time management. And some of the questions Jackie's asking, you could see a webinar on the CBay set of him kind of talking through how do you get to the sort of four or five things that matter to you and write those in vivid and compelling terms to have kind of clear language on where you want to go and the kinds of things that you want to accomplish. Um, you know, Lydia, what are, where, what are some of the things you'd leave the audience with? Absolutely. I mean, this is uh, both what I'm going to say underscores what both Jackie and Jonathan said, which are absolutely correct things to do. And this is also maybe a little bit too revealing about how my brain works, but um, make like make a matrix about it. And I say that not just because it's important to think about like different trade-offs and pros and cons. And like Jackie said, you know, do you want to eat in this place? Like, can you go running? Like, if that's important to you, how do we evaluate this? Um, I made a, a lot of different spreadsheets about various parts in the decision, right? Like, do I even go to school? What do I do if I don't? How does that impact my career? And then also, of course, when I was evaluating between different programs, um, I will also say as an aside, like you will get our contact information and I'm more than happy to talk through decision-making processes with people because this is pretty fresh for me. Um, but the thing about making a, a matrix and like having different categories that you can then evaluate across these decisions is it, the answer is like not actually in the matrix and sort of those, those uh, things that you fill into the cells themselves. What doing that allows you to do is like really boil down uh, how you are feeling about it and sort of like your emotional resonance and which piece feels right. Because um, as you will probably see, a lot of decisions end up being more or less equal um, as far as what you're able to put on the piece of paper. Um, but, but having that infrastructure to evaluate for yourself allows you then to answer the questions that Jonathan and Jackie are talking about of like, which of these is more compelling? Where do I resonate? Where do I see the fit? is this environment the, the right way I want to be supported in these goals, not just like, can I achieve those goals? Um, so nerdy and lame, but I definitely would, you know, challenge yourself to come up with decision-making processes that are like that in order to help support yourself boiling down the right answer. 
nerdy and geeky, but not lame because it's all based on research about how you're going to be happy with your decision too. Like if you do all that data analysis and you do all that rigorous work, and then you come to the point where you're seeing as Lydia is saying, like what across that matters and means something like what strikes you in your gut? How do you connect your head and your heart on a decision? And if you're making that from a point of then saying like my gut and my heart is telling me this, the research suggests you're going to be happier with it anyway. And then there's like a confirmation bias of being at the school. So like if we're telling you stories that don't match where you, where you want to be and what fit you want, like, and you pick another place, you're going to be happier at that place because the fit isn't right. But if the stories match and they feel like things that matter to you and the way you want to learn or engage with people, then make sure that you're getting more of those, tapping into them and figuring out what this, um, the next three years, two years, um, can look like. And we're thrilled you made the time to hang out with us today uh, and chat. Um, if you all, you know, have a chance, go make yourself some nice popcorn after this, um, you know, warm it up. Um, you can watch then the recording of this later on with your popcorn if you so choose. Um, but uh, no, it's a, um, I've been here now 12 years. Um, the place has incredible depth, um, a love of learning, uh, a group of people whose kind of intellect matches the depth of their souls. Uh, and a spot where, you know, you get to feel like things are possible and really, really big problems are fixable. Uh, and that for me is a place to just like hang out and invest in because that optimism, that spirit of seeing a better, um, better versions of ourselves while we're here, but then better versions of the society that we can have is something that I think people are really relentlessly pursuing in their geeky ways um, all across uh, the Joint Degree Program. And uh, um, these are three of those folks here uh, and they're happy to be um, engaged um, and connect you to other people in the community. Um, I'm also, you can find me online in lots of different ways um, and email me or get in touch uh, or book a short meeting with me to chat about any of the specific interests that you may have if we didn't get to your question today. I'm really thanks, thankful to um, the SOM admissions team, Maria, who is um, there, not on, uh, with showing her screen, but behind the scenes, has done a wonderful job with this as always. Um, and again, our thanks to you all for making the time and considering um, the Yale School of Management and the Joint Degree Program. I um, hope you have a lovely day. Uh, thanks again to Jack, um, Jack and Lydia and Jonathan for preparing so well for this, um, sharing so many of their stories and experiences. Um, yeah. Really appreciate it uh, and um, be well, y'all. We're just gonna sit here in silence for a second to make sure that the edits for this work well.